just in reviewing the the game uh, from Saturday night, uh, just an incredible college football game. I thought it was really, uh, really well, hard played game on both sides, and it and it really came down to three factors that we talked about going into the game. You know, the turnovers were were so critical in the game, and I thought our defense did a great job. Um, you know, this is a, a quarterback that doesn't turn the ball over. We got four turnovers. Um, and then, you know, the turnovers that we had were so critical. Red zone turnovers going in. Um, and we just didn't play off each other very well. You know, we, we turn over the ball running in on the in the first uh, part of the game. And, you know, and then they get the big play right after we turn it over. So it's a really a 14-point swing. And then... You know, the interception return for 100 yards, it's just really hard to overcome that kind of play in the game when it's such a close game and and uh, every play is critical. Um, the third downs were really, really big, and we've done a great job defensively of playing well on third down, um, and they were one of the top. They were the top in the conference of third down conversions, and they did a great job in the game converting getting to short yardage and then converting. Um, you know, they were 11 and 18, and that was a big part of the outcome of the game. And then, you know, the big big part for us, which is a learning experience for a football team, um, you know, we have to make the critical plays in the fourth quarter to win a game like that. We haven't been scoring enough in the fourth quarter. Um, there's always a part time in the game uh, in the fourth quarter where the defense has to come up with a critical stop and then the offense needs to score um, they had three incredible plays in the game I thought the long touchdown to seven was a amazing throw and catch um, they had another third down reception in the fourth quarter where a guy actually caught the ball in between his legs which was an incredible play and then the throw and catch on fourth down was just amazing. You don't see it, it, it done that well very often. So, um, you know, really, really incredible game. You know, I just talked to our football team about, you know, we see the difference between winning and, and losing a, a game versus a championship team. And it really comes down to your entire preparation throughout the week, the way you study film, the way you practice, um, the way you prepare – for those moments in the game that are so critical. Um, and so that's what we're learning as a team. And, uh, um, you know, we had a lot of young players do a lot of good things in that game. You know, I thought Ty Ganji was not 100%, but he played very well in the game. Um, and we can really build on the mentality that we had. We had a, a whole locker room full of players that expected to win that game. And uh, that's the type of mentality that that we've been pressing for and that we have to build on. Um, you know, moving forward uh, this week, um, you know, we get to go to Hawaii. Um, it's a great opportunity, this team that's playing much better. Um, um, they've already won six games. They've won three conference games. They just come off a big loss this week to BYU. But it's an important conference game for us, a game in our division. Um, they're a, they're a very challenging offense to prepare against. They've gone back to the run and shoot. They have a very um, athletic, capable quarterback who's playing at a high level. Really uh, uh, exciting uh, athletic receivers. So we're going to have to do a great job of preparing against them. Their, their defense, they have a new coordinator who's in his first year. Um, very experienced front seven who's the strength of their defense. Their linebackers are are the leaders of that defense. They're athletic. They're playing with a lot of energy and a lot of confidence. And so it's going to be a, a big, big challenge for us. Um, you know, overall, it's a challenging trip whenever you go to Hawaii. You know, you're, you're dealing with time change and all that. We're going to make some adjustments in our practices this week to accommodate that. But uh, ultimately, it's up to the maturity of our coaches and our, and our team on how to ha handle an opportunity like this. Um, it's a chance for us to go win on the road. You know, it's a chance for us to win a conference game, a game in our division, um, and keep pressing for all our goals. Uh, 
you know, uh, going down the stretch, we really feel like um, we have an opportunity to reach a tremendous amount of our goals. And so this this game is really a, a big part of that. You know, Nevada has been playing Hawaii since 1920. Um, so it's a long standing game and uh, one that we feel very fortunate to be a part of. So um, with that, any questions you may have? Ah, uh, we're going to practice in the evenings this week. Uh, um, we just had our morning meeting and, and reviewed the game. We're going to let the kids sleep in a little bit, and you know we play at nine o'clock Hawaii time, and we practice in the morning. If we practice in the afternoon, it probably wouldn't be that big a deal. But since we practice so early, uh, we're just going to let our kids sleep in, and it's a good change up in midpoint of the season. So we'll practice at 9 o'clock in the stadium all week. That's the time we play, 6 o'clock Hawaii time, 9 o'clock Reno time. So we'll just get them on that clock starting tonight and um, let them get some rest and kind of get on island time. And and uh, so we'll, we'll just handle it that way. It, it's a good time of year because uh, we've been do, running the same schedule for a while. So it'll get a little change up, kind of give everybody a little different uh, schedule this week. The defense played well again for a third straight game. I guess um, you wanted to talk a little bit about Jeff Castile and the imprint he's left on this defense. I mean, what has been kind of his impact? You know, Jeff is a, Jeff is a really experienced coach. Uh, you know, when when I was looking at guys and had an opportunity to bring him here, I just felt like uh, he could bring so much. And you know, very similar to our offense, uh, so different than what the team was playing here before you know this is just a lot of little things about uh, playing the 3-3 stack that our kids weren't familiar with and you know I think the big thing this year was we made some adjustments to the defensive front and and I think you know our linebackers are starting to take Jeff's personality you know Gabe Sewell really is understanding the little uh, adjustments that happen in this stack we're starting to play downhill with our linebackers and attack the line of scrimmage. And our safeties are really, really playing well. Um, you know, Asani Rufus and Damian Babers and Nephi Sewell. You know, this is a three safety defense. And um, I think our safeties, our linebackers, our front, they're all kind of taking the personality of Coach Castile and our defensive coaches. Um, and, and uh, you know, I, I've said it many times, you know, I, I played against Jeff for eight years at Oklahoma, and this was the kind of style of defense we had to face. I mean, a lot of pressure on third down, you know, just different angles that backers come from. And, uh, you know, Jeff is just understands all the nuances of it. He's been running it so long. And now our kids are starting to take that personality. And just, you know, I can't say enough about the pride of our seniors. Um, you know, Corey and Corey Rush and Asani Rufus and and uh, all of our seniors, Damian Babers, are playing their best football. And you have to have that um, if you're going to have a successful team. And, and we're certainly seeing that on defense. Uh, um, very, very prideful uh, in in – our stinginess of not allowing, you know, the team to make plays on us. So, um, and it's growing. Uh, it's growing every week, and it's got to continue to grow. You know, you know, I always I like to see where we are in the conference with the conference stats, and you know, we're holding our opponents in the 20s, and that's where we want to be. And and we can we can even improve on that even more. You know, we've got more turnovers than any team in our conference since conference play started, and we can build on that. And so, um, you know, that's been another part of our defense that we, we're, we're starting to get turnovers on a regular basis. And, and that's, that's all attitude and personality. And, you know, obviously Coach Castile's done a great job with that. With those turnovers in the defense that you mentioned, with, uh, uh, or with, with uh, Damian Baber getting two of them, just the way he seems to have a nose for the ball. What has he uh, meant to your success this season? Well, Damian is such an explosive player. Uh, um, and it was about this time last year where he really woke up and, and just started playing outstanding football. Uh, he's just so explosive. And uh, 
You know, he can get to a lot of balls a lot of players can't get to. And he's experienced. Um, and, you know, I just and, – and, you know, him and Asani have played together for so long uh, and they're so experienced. I just think they're taking a lot of pride in, in going out as seniors together. And, uh, you know, the sense of urgency that, that our seniors have is rubbing off on our younger players. And, and, I, and I told our, our seniors this last, last week, you know, our younger players learn how to prepare for games like this by watching the seniors, how they, how they meet, how they watch film, how they practice. All the details of that is learned in a program. You know, I, I grew up and, and I played at the University of Iowa. I watched Bob Stoops. He was, I watched everything he did as a player and I learned how to prepare by the way he prepared and practiced. And so, um, you know, Ty Ganji, Corey Rush, Asani Rufus, um, Damian Babers, those guys are all training our younger players on how to get ready for games like this. What are the differences between the run and shoot and the air raid? I mean, the ball. Uh, a lot of option routes in the run and shoot. Um, you know, the run and shoot doesn't have a lot of concepts, but there's a lot of adjustments within each concept. Uh, you know, they don't they don't play with any tight ends or four wides exclusively. You know, their quarterback can run a little bit, and so that's part of their running game. Um, but the run and shoot, you know, will will their receivers will read the defensive coverage, and then they run adjustments according to coverage. So there's a lot of adjustments in that, and and they they use. Uh, you know, they, they'll use a little shovel screen on third down. Um, and, you know, they've done a nice job of, of making that transition back to the run and shoot. And, and I think their quarterback's played at a high level. He's done a really nice job. He's a good athlete, too. So, and they've got really speedy, quick receivers, and, and that's a strength of their, their uh, roster. So they're playing to their strengths. Um, I also think they're playing better in their offensive line than they were a year ago when we played them. And, and they're playing with more confidence defensively. They, they kind of have, have dialed into an identity and they're staying with it. And I think that's a credit to their coaches. So not, not something you haven't seen really in the run this year? Not, not, not to this extent, no. And so it's a little different preparation for us. Um, and uh, they're going to be committed to that. And, and so we're going to have to really do a good job of understanding their strengths, and and we'll you know we'll have a good package for them. Obviously, you guys have been a lot better against the run defensively. How would you assess what you guys have done against the pass? I think it's been better. Uh, I really think uh, you know Coach Lockwood and and Coach Chamoris have really done a good job of of teaching and having our guys understand where to have their eyes. Um, you know, I said this in the beginning of the year is, is that, you know, we're going to get beat physically at times, but we can't get beat mentally. We can't have mental errors and give teams big chunks of yardage by, by being out of position. And that's going to be really important this week because uh, you have a, a, a passing game that can attack the field, you know, horizontally and vertically, and they've got the talented skilled players to do that. So, um, we're going to have to really have our eyes in the right spot. We're going to have to do a great job of discipline and rushing the quarterback. And then we're going to have to really, you know, be disciplined in our coverage lanes in the back end and make sure that we're acting on the ball. One of the big things when you play a team like this is, is you can't allow them to catch and run. It's the yardage after the catch that kills you. And so we got to, we got to do a great job of having our eyes in the right place, breaking on the ball and then tackling in the back end and not giving them extra yardage. That's a big part of playing a team like this. How well do you know uh, Coach Rolovich? I've gotten to know Coach Rolo uh, pretty good at our meetings. And, you know, he's just a – he's a fun-loving guy, likes to have fun, and and, uh, and a good guy, a really good guy. And, you know, he's uh, – I think we have a tremendous conference of coaches, uh, um, you know, and Rolo certainly is his own personality. and. You know, I, I enjoy being around him. We talk talk ball wherever we're around each other. And, uh, you know, he's done, a, he's done a really good job with his team this year. How's Ty doing? Ty's doing better. Uh, Ty, you know, got through the game all right. And, um, you know, he, he pushed through practice last week. And, 
you know, just did a great job of leading our team, uh, giving us a chance to win, making the plays that he had to make. And, you know, I just really uh, – I would have liked to seen him have an opportunity at the end of that game to see what he could do. You know, we, we fought like crazy. And, uh, you know, you got to give Boise credit. I mean, that was – that was an incredible drive. They had the ball for eight minutes in the fourth quarter, and that's what a championship team does. I mean, they, they ran the ball. They had third down conversions and then the incredible throw and catch on fourth down. It just, But, you know, uh, I've, we really – I you know, Ty's been practicing to be in moments like that, and, you know, I think he's going to get his shot as we go down the stretch to be in similar moments like that. Can you just talk about him coming onto this team and, uh, and how well he's done as a freshman? You know, Toa's just been done a, a tremendous job. Uh, you know, he's our leading rusher. Um, you know, and, and we kind of play all those backs for, for sit, certain situations. Um, but Toa's just an explosive guy, really good pass receiver. Um, you know, we, we, we were using a little wildcat stuff for him. Um, and, and I just think he's going to continue to do be become a big time player in this league as the season goes along. And you know we're going to keep creating more opportunities for him. But just a fun loving kid uh, brings a lot of confidence and, and uh, maturity to our offense, and gives us a, a little different uh, uh, weapon than we had a year ago. You know I think we've improved running the football, um, and and he certainly has done a great job of bringing that to us. Interesting story with uh, when you got hired, Vi showed up at like 5 a.m. or something like that. Can, can you just tell me how that all played you out? You know, um, one of the things, uh, you know, after I got hired, I was going to meet with the staff and 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 uh, Doug and I, I don't know what time it was. It was early, <laughs> 5, 5.30, I don't know. But, you know, I think Vi was sleeping in the parking lot waiting to talk to me. And, and that really made an impression on me. And, and, and I had known about his past and what a – important player he he was was here uh, for coach alt and um, you know he, he just wanted to be part of this program and and uh, it's so important for us to have the connection with the former players you know you know things we've done with the wolfpack walk and all that I, I can't tell you how significant that is for the growth of our team and our understanding of their place in the history of this program and and vi is one of those guys you know uh, Vi was in the room last week and we talked about the game, the 2010 game. We showed the team the highlights and Vi talked about what was said at halftime, you know, when the team was down 24 to 7. And so just the mentality of, of uh, you know, what will you want to establish here? Um, you know, this is a blue collar program. This is what it's been known for over the years. And we've We've worked really hard to get back to that, and uh, and so Vi is a big part of that. How do you address fourth quarter woes? Because it's really, I guess, it's not something you can really coach. I mean, how do you go about that? No, it's just it's just a matter of how you live your life, how you prepare. You know, we talk all the time with our team. You can't have a disciplined team unless you have individual individual discipline. And so, you know, that's going to class, it's being on time, that's that's keeping a clean locker room, that's preparing and doing what you're supposed to do every day. And so, um, you know, that was my last words to the team right before this this press conference was that we have to be the team that does the right things going down the stretch. And everything you do during the week prepares you for your opportunity in the fourth quarter when the game's on the line. And so, uh, you know, we, we, we talk a lot about that individual accountability and, and preparing the right way. and. And we and we want to be that team that's doing the right things as we move down the stretch because it's going to matter. Well, you lost the last two games, or are you maybe more confident in what this team can do just based on how you played the last two teams? In the last a- absolutely, I, you know, I told the team, uh, you know, I was really disappointed last year on how we played Boise. It wasn't the the end result; it was how we played them. Uh, I didn't think we fought. I didn't think we stood up to them. Uh, I didn't think we competed to win last year. Um, and there's a big difference uh, in, in, in their mentality. And and we had a locker room of players that expected to win that game. And they were, they were determined uh, to do the things they had to do to give us a chance to win the game. And that's really a decision you make before the game happens. Um, and, and we've talked a lot about them, that mentality. Um, and, 
you know, we're, we're, we're getting a very resilient group of people in our locker room that, that is willing to do the hard things to win games like that. And that's a choice um, that our players make. And, uh, you know, I think uh, as we move down the stretch, that's something we can build on. Now we just got to we got to finish. We got to learn how to finish and um, and we got to continue to do the things that are going to put us in position where we can finish. You know, I just got done talking to our seniors about that and, and, and our captains. And, um, you know, obviously Mark was a, a player that, that had really strong relationships with most of our older players. And, and it's an important week uh, that we remember Mark and, and his family. He would have been on this trip. He would have been a senior. And uh, we're going to connect with his, his family Friday when we're there. I know it's important that our our kids, we remember him on this trip. Um, you know, and, and I didn't know Mark. I, I know uh, that he was a walk on and I know he had a tremendous spirit and that uh, our players had tremendous respect for what he brought to this program. And, you know, your team is built up with a lot of guys. You know, you have, you have uh, kids from all different ethnic groups from different parts of the country. And, and when we all come together, it's pretty special. And, uh, you know, we have several Polynesian kids on our team, kids that are some kids from the islands. And, and uh, you know, that we just had a team meeting talking about a lot of that stuff. And, and each one of those guys brings something special. And that's what makes a team such a unique thing. And, and, uh, and Mark was one of those guys. And so, you know, we will honor him this week. It'll be important for, especially for our older kids going back, that we do that. You touched. I got one more if you don't mind. Yeah. You kind of touched on the uniqueness of this trip. I mean, how different is it going to a place like Hawaii compo uh, compared to a trip? Um, it's it's just important that it, our kids understand it's a business trip, you know, and it's hard to avoid. You're going to Hawaii. I mean, you know, and, and I I just asked half of our team put their hand up. They'd never been there before. So, yes, we're going to go to the beach. Yes, we're going to see some stuff we haven't seen before. But we're going there to win a football game. And so it's a business trip. It's important that everybody understands that. Um, um, when we get off the plane, we're going to take them to the beach so they can say they saw the beach. And then we're going to have special teams meetings and offensive and defensive meetings after that. So um, it, it'll be different, but that's, that's part of it. You know, this football team after Saturday night will have played in three different time zones this year. So. Um, I think that's pretty unique, and, it, and that's a neat thing for our school. You know, people can come play football at Nevada and, and have a chance to play in Hawaii and play in Nashville and play all, all these awesome places we get to play. So I, I look at that as a great opportunity to say that you've done that. And, uh, but certainly as a challenge for, for everybody involved, coaches, players, staff, and everybody to go play in three different time zones. And, and so, you know, we want to go and get the job done. That's the most important thing. Questions for Corey? Are you more confident about this team than, you know, 14 days ago, even though you lost last two games? Um, no, I think I'm just as confident. Like, I knew what we could do. Um, I knew what we had. Um, two tough losses. Um, definitely sucks, but I knew, I knew we could play with the best of this conference already. Um, I'm just looking forward to proving it again on Saturday and against the rest of the co conference coming up. Is it hard not to think about those last two games and what you guys could have done? Oh, uh, yeah, it sucks. Like, absolutely. I mean, like, having Boise on the ropes like that and, you know what I mean, Fresno, um, you know, having a shot at that, it just, it just sucks because we work so hard for those games and to not pull them out, it's just heartbreaking. But it's whatever. We got to move on. Obviously, a very different <coughs> challenge with the run and shoot. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know that you faced that in your career here. I don't uh, think so. Guess, yeah. What are going to be the keys, I guess, against a Hawaii team that, that just isn't something that you've really seen before? Um, just playing hard. They're they're fast paced. I mean, we played Rolo's a, a, a semblance of Rolo's offense for like two or three years here. Um, I know it wasn't exactly the same thing as what he's doing at Hawaii, um, but it's similar. Um, so. Just looking forward to playing hard and just playing good defense again. So that's really just where our goal is at. You have played against the last couple of years, but is this offense way different than what he was doing? 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're right. It is. It's it's super up tempo. It's super fast paced. I haven't really, honestly, watched too much of it yet. But I was just watching the BYU game uh, earlier this morning, and I was like, wow, they sling it around a lot. So that was surprising. But I just think we need to get after quarterback and and uh, keep him contained out of the run game, and uh, just I think everything will pan out. What encourages you? Encourages you about the recent play at your side? Um, I just think. Ah, I don't know. Um, <laughs> oh, I just think we've played hard as a team, honestly. Um, I think everybody knows their job, and I think, um, you know, my teammates are taking a lot of pride in playing defense. Um, we also have a great group, 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 group of coaches that um, I don't think people talk about enough. I think Jeff Castillo and the our back-end coaches, Lockwood and Chamorris and uh, Coach Cafusi are all really good coaches. Um, and I think that they do a really good job with us and deserve a lot of the credit for the success that we have on the field. Finishing in the fourth quarter is obviously a topic of discussion. How do you address that? It's not really something you could, that can be coached to you guys. Yeah, I think Coach Norvell said it best. Um, that, was, that was one of my big issues. That's the thing I was most upset about is, um, you know, winners win. And sometimes I think we need to get that men mentality around here. Um, it's not something that we've had in my time here. And that's why we don't pull out games in the fourth quarter um, because we're not used to being there and we're not used to winning those games. And Boise is. Fresno is, so that's why we've been blowing these games. Um, I think it's just really like, you know, got to do whatever you got to do to win the game. Um, they had an eight-minute drive to finish the game, and I know we played whatever, but we got to get off the field. You know what I'm saying? And that's just the thing that winning programs do to, to win tight ball games late. It's not a thing that you naturally have to learn. I mean, the Oregon State the Air Force games in the fourth quarter, I mean, it looks like you guys are trying to figure out how you close out opponents. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I, I think that definitely is something that you have to learn as a program as a whole. Um, I know we have kids that come from winning high school programs, so I know we have kids who are winners and who have won in the past. But I just think um, losing those type, type of games for so long, it kind of patterns something in your brain that you might not necessarily be able to do it. But we can. Like, we can we, – we could have won every single game on our schedule, especially outside of the Vanderbilt game, but especially all these later games. Like, we just got to finish in the fourth quarter, and we got to know that we can pull this out, and that's the big jump that we need to take. You look at that Vanderbilt game; I mean, they're not necessarily better than boys or Fresno. Does that mm -hmm. just show how far you guys have come over the last month and a half? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, you know, the Vanderbilt game was tough because they do some unique things on offense. Just. A lot of window dressing, um, but yeah, they're they're not that much better of a team than Fresno or Boise. Um, I just think that we've grown substantially in the confidence area over these last couple of of uh, weeks, and realized that while we do have a good team, we do have a team that can beat good teams, and we do have a team that uh, plays good football. Now it's just doing it. You know, what I mean, now it's just beating these teams. <laughs> what are the challenges with uh, going to a place like Hawaii? Um, not a ton. I mean, going to Hawaii is hard just because they're very prideful. Um, playing the Hawaiian people, it's just a very, it's a different type of element, honestly. Um, but I think we have a super mature football team, and I think that it's like my responsibility, it's Kalei's responsibility, it's Dame and Sonny's responsibility to make everybody realize that yeah, we're in a, we're in a sick place, like it's dope, but like we're here to play a football game. You know what I mean? Like that's what that's what we're here for. Sorry for using those words too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is that harder than going to Nashville to, to go to an island like that? Oh, definitely. Like, you want to go to Hawaii or Nashville? <laughs> Do your body feel differently on a trip like that? As oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. The, the time difference is different. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's going to be fun. I like, you know, I mean, switching it up and changing up the tempo a little bit. It kind of gets uh, vanilla around here, so now going in the in the night will definitely rejuvenate the the guys. I think. It's a little colder, though. Yeah, but, well, yeah. It's, it's Nevada, man. It's always cold. <laughs> Winter is coming. <laughs> yeah. What do you remember about Mark and his spirit and how he rubbed off on the other guys on the team? Um. Mark was my boy as, as he was everybody's boy. Um, I think my old defensive line coach said best at the, the celebration of life we had for him. He said Mark's whole thing was helping the guys in front of him, helping the guys that were older or, you know what I mean, just ahead of him or whatever, just helping everybody. Like, in his time, he never, he never really got to, 
you know what I mean, contribute on the field. But he was just so giving in every way, um, whether it was coming in and trying to help guys, you know what I mean, learn new things or helping the young guys come into the program. Like, it's not lip service when we, when we say he was an amazing human being. He really was that through and through. And that's just why it was so tragic losing him. And that's why this game is so special to us and everybody involved with, with him and in, with this program. Oh, absolutely. And I think, honestly, all of our seniors since he since he's passed has played for him in some way. I know that before every game, I, I don't know if it's his locker, if for some reason, a thought of Mark Mott comes back to me before every single game, home or away. And I just think that that's how it is for all of our guys that came in in that year. It's just, it was it was rough, and I think we all have dedicated a lot of our careers to him. Corey, with the way the Boise State game ended, uh, do you see it more as a like a mental challenge to get over that, just the way it went down, or do you view this coming up as, you know, it's just another game we lost, we got to move forward? Yeah, um, no, nah, that was that was by far the roughest loss of my career. Don't get me wrong, but like we have so much ahead of us, and we have so many winnable games ahead of us, and we have so many challenges ahead of us that we need to get over that and bury it. Um, to be honest with you, Sunday was really rough for me, um, but. Just my whole like kind of personality is back, and I'm I'm upbeat, and I'm ready to get back to work. So I think that's where our whole team is. Yeah. And with the way your buddy Damian Faber just seems to have a nose for the ball on defense, uh, what's it like to be playing with him as well as just to have him on the team? I mean, it's just amazing. We're here to make him look good. Now I'm just playing. But uh, no, having playing with D- with Dame is is so much fun because once again, another selfless guy. Like I don't know if you guys have spent much time around Damian Faber, but he says zero words to like people he doesn't know very well. He's just very quiet to himself and very humble and just a great kid. And when he makes plays, if you just look at our sideline, everybody loves seeing Dave make plays because he's such an amazing person. So that's 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 why I love seeing him make plays and that's why it's so much fun. Uh, on top of that, he's by far the best athlete on our team. So that's, yeah, sick. Anything else for Corey? All right, thank you. Thank you. Questions for Colette. What does it mean uh, to go play in Hawaii one more time? Uh, obviously, I'm very excited to go home and have family. You know, I think last time we had this press conference going in Hawaii, I, always, I mentioned how I'm usually the first guy people come to to ask for tickets because I don't really have family come out. The past two games, my grandparents have been to, uh, or past three games, my grandparents came out. This game, uh, I'm asking for 70 tickets from the from the travel team. <laughs> uh, so we're working on it, <laughs> but uh, you know I'm very excited just to have my family out there. It's just it's a big thing. You know my parents haven't been able to come out to Reno to watch a game, so I'm very excited for them to be able to watch me play back home. You're not sitting here rooting for Hawaii, but with what Rolo's been able to do there and kind of revitalize that program, what do you think it means to, to the Hawaiian people? Um, obviously, they were in a little bit of a rough patch before Rolo came in with uh, Coach Chow. And I mean, I'm happy for him. I'm happy for his success. He's the one who recruited me here. And I'm, I'm just happy that he's been able to turn them around and, you know, first year go to a bowl game. Second year, they weren't as successful this year. It seems like they're kind of on track, but. You know, I'm excited to go there and, you know, sh- let them know, you know, what's up. You know. What did, you know, Ty coming back for the offense last uh, game kind of do for you guys? Uh, I think he just, I mean, he's the commander, you know. He's the, he's the head honcho. So he just, obviously he's not fully, he wasn't fully back. You know, he didn't have that running aspect in his game. But he's still, you know, able to read the defense, throw the ball around, and you know, I think that was something that helped a lot in terms of sparking the offense. You guys have been into a, a lot of fourth quarter games, and maybe just still learning how to close that fourth quarter. Um, I guess what, what's going to be the biggest key to you know being able to, to close out games in the final period? I mean, I think the the biggest thing I think is uh, starting fast first, because I think starting fast. Once you get going, you kind of you have to keep going. You can't just start slow and then kind of have spots here and there where you you play hard. I think that the key to us finishing in the fourth quarter is starting fast in the first quarter. We jump on guys. It's it's a lot easier for 
for a team to win a game when you're up ahead and you can just keep running it down and just end it for them. Um, did you know Mark Long when you were back in Hawaii? And I guess what did he mean to you during your time here? When you were there? So I, I personally didn't know Mark, but we played against each other. He played for Iolani. I played for Kumeme. Um, he, he's their top defensive lineman. And I think I made the joke last time we talked about this in a press conference going to Hawaii is I didn't know, I thought he was Samoan. I thought his name was Ma before I met him. You know, I thought it was Mark Ma, not Mark Ma. And you know, he, he became one of my very good friends down here. Uh, last week was actually, last week Monday was his birthday. So we went out to eat sushi just to celebrate. And you know, we all had a spider roll, which is, was his favorite roll. Loves the soft shell crab. Um, but, sorry, could you repeat the question? <laughs> oh, he, yeah, he was just, just, he was just a great person, just probably the most selfless, most humble, humble person you would ever meet, I think. You know, he worked extremely hard, and I think, you know, had the events not happened that had happened, he would have found his way onto the field, and he would have contributed on, on the field. But, uh, you know, he just kind of just makes everyone a better person by a way of being himself and just being a good person. What does it mean to you that the coaching staff has kind of embraced him, even though they didn't really, you know, they didn't coach him specifically, but they've tried to keep his memory alive with, you know, lockers and things like that? I think that is just a very honorable thing to do, and I think that's the correct thing to do, especially with, you know, the number of players that he influenced while he was here, I think that there's no way that you could come in and, you know, take away his locker or do any things like that. I think that that is, you know, you you have to acknowledge Mark and you have to honor Mark because of, you know, his impact on the team. You just touch on how the, the mentality of, of this team has changed and how you guys are expecting to win some of these games, and that's part of why you're so dejected after maybe the last two Saturdays, but how that mentality is going to kind of get you guys to where you want to be, you know, knowing that you can compete. Yeah, so, I mean, it, it all begins with Coach Nor Norvell's philosophy of quarters for the season. So his philosophy is you have to win every quarter. So currently we're in the middle of the third quarter with – it goes Boise, Hawaii, San Diego State. So to win this third quarter, we got to win. We got to beat Hawaii and we got to beat San Diego State. You know, we, we didn't win the second quarter. Um, I think that the mentality around here is, you know, obviously there's been a lot of influence from guys who came before us. You know, you have Vi around and we have the Wolfpack Walk. So you have people who were part of winning programs. They come and talk to us and the mentality is that we expect to win because of, I mean, I want to say Nevada grit. It's, you know, we're just gritty guys. It's like you just expect, you expect to go in and compete no matter who you play. You expect to, to take them down to the wire. You expect them to be sore and to feel like we, you know, like if they if they lost the game, they know that uh, man they they took it from us. And if they beat us, then they have to think that that you know they lucked out. That oh man, like they those guys played really hard. And you know it's football. Some things go your way, some things don't. And you know football the coin fell in our favor that day. But I just think that you know this is a team of competitors. I think that we expect to go in and compete and win games. And I think that, you know, obviously changes in the offense, changes in the defense, this is the second year. So obviously you're going to see a lot of improvements. What about the Hawaii defense? I mean, what, are, what are they like to do uh, well? And, and what are going to be the biggest challenges? I think similar to Boise State, they are, they excel in rushing the passer. You know, they have a, uh, Kaimana Padello, last I checked, was second in the nation, tied for second in the nation with sacks. Uh, I know they're they're physical. They like to hit. You know, I expect that from any any Hawaii team. They're always going to want to hit. Uh, so the challenge will be protecting the passer, which I think we we did well against Boise State. So I think we just have to take the growth that we've you know 
we've gone from giving up like 15 quarterback hits in like the first couple games, like, you know, too much pressure to kind of shoring up our pass protection, protecting Ty, which is especially important considering his, you know, his leg right now. Um, I think we just need to continue to improve upon the things that we've improved on. And I think we'll be fine.